from a Siberian paddy wagon. But escaping from bonds of rope and steel were not enough. To generate bigger audiences for his stage shows, he risked a drowning death. Houdini yearned to share his success with his now widowed mother. So he sent for her in Budapest, and giving her a gown designed for the late Queen Victoria, presented her like royalty to relatives and old family friends. Triumphantly, he returned to America as a vaudeville headliner, earning $1,200 a week. Drumming up business in each new town with increasingly hazardous stunts, it now seemed as though nothing could hold him. It was impossible for audiences to understand how he could survive in a box, in the dark, underwater, for four minutes. Only the few close to him knew how he picked locks with his toes, and even dislocated his joints to escape. The crowds always wondered if this time Houdini would die. How often did he wonder himself? Death fascinated him, and he would frequently hire a local photographer to take his picture by a famous tombstone. He even arranged a stunt in which he was buried alive six feet deep. The weight of the earth nearly suffocated him. He swore he'd never attempt it again. Houdini delighted in convincing his audience he was always just a breath away from death. No stunt achieved that better than the water torture cell. The audience was allowed to inspect the 100-gallon tank, but they could never detect a trick. Behind a drawn curtain, Houdini would somehow escape and then wait unseen as minutes passed. When the audience could bear the tension no longer, Houdini would emerge, breathless, to their immense relief. Some were so amazed by Houdini's prowess, they were sure he possessed paranormal abilities. Magic expert Walter Gibson discussed this issue with Houdini during their friendship in the 1920s. The question has been raised about Houdini's um, approach to the supernatural. Many thought that he had mediumistic powers himself and that he didn't want to advertise that fact, so he simply pretended that his escapes were normal things. So they thought that the reason that he enclosed himself in a cabinet was to get the darkness that would bring spirit aid and that he actually would dematerialize from some of these contraptions in which he'd been placed. The more successful Houdini became, the more his mother was proud of him. Ironically, his act grew so popular they rarely saw each other anymore. When he and Bess set sail for another European tour, Mama came to say her farewell. It was the last time they would see her alive. Devastated by the loss, Houdini would spend hours by her grave, hoping for a word from beyond. The vigil became an obsession that would change the course of his life. Houdini entered a period of intense mourning following the death of his mother. He edged his stationery in black and published elaborate tributes to her. After a year, he recovered from his grief and burst upon the American scene with renewed vigor and purpose. The public response was greater than ever as Houdini introduced a new twist to his straitjacket escape. Although it appeared more dangerous, Houdini would later admit the inverted position made his release simpler. In city after city, his genius for publicity drew huge crowds and packed the theaters night after night.
made his tricks even easier. Playing characters named Harvey Hanford and Harry Harper, the movies and serials featured the stunts that had made him famous. Within a few years, he formed his own motion picture company. The theme of his first movie was reincarnation as Houdini comes back to life from an icy arctic grave as the man from beyond. The plot of the movie nearly caused him disaster at Niagara Falls. Despite Houdini's safety precautions, the stunt almost killed him and his co-star. those who say he encouraged these brushes with death. Death and what lay beyond would always fascinate Houdini, for this was the barrier that separated him from his beloved mother. Trying to contact her became an obsession. During the 1920s, spiritualism was widespread, giving hope to the living that they could communicate with the dead. Mediums prospered in darkened seance rooms, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, author of Sherlock Holmes, was one of its major advocates. On tour in England, Houdini accompanied Doyle to over 100 seances, but still no messages came from his beloved mother. So great was Houdini.